Senator Bray. Good evening, Council. Good evening, Mr. Herring. My name is Paul Herring, and I'm going to try to accomplish three things in the five minutes that I have. And I, I may talk fast, and I may get a little disjointed, but please bear with me. The first and most important thing I want to say is, Brother Early, I'm so glad you stayed. I am so glad he stayed to hear what we had to say, hey. and I'm impressed by that. Because he doesn't have to stay. He doesn't have to bring the thing that you're voting on to you. See, refuse to vote. Abstain from voting on it and see what happens. He can implement it without you guys. Okay, so this is a dog and pony show, and I like shows. <laughs> You know, it was, it was either this or the Housewives of Atlanta. I decided to watch this, all right? Record it. Record it. But now that Mr. Early's here, I would like to ask him a favor. You know, he's been here for a while, and we don't know what he does. You know, I would like to see Mr. Early once a month do a State of the City address. I'd like him to come up and say, listen, we fired three people from the uh, maintenance department, and we jobbed it out to Owasso uh, Landscaping. I just want to hear those kind of things. I, I want to know that maybe he stopped people from using printer ink right. and he saved the city $20,000 doing right. that. I want to know that he hired somebody for $60,000 to go out to Arizona right. and bring back these water, uh, desperately water rich businesses to Flint to take care of this Karagandi or take right. advantage of what we're doing with our water. Those are the kinds of things I want to hear. It's not going to all be good and I don't want him to ask our permission. I just want him to tell us what he's doing. Right. I want to know how you're saving us money, how you're making us money, and, and that's really what I want to know. Right. That's really what I want to know. So if you could consider that. I don't know if it's a memo or not. The other issue is Robert's Rules. Has there been an executive order to eliminate Robert's Rules? No. Nope. Then we need a parliamentarian, and I was going to suggest Peter Bade because, Eric, you aren't the one. You aren't the one. You just can't bring the message the way they need to hear it. But Brother Freeman, you know Robert's rules. Brother Neely, you know Robert's rules. And shame on the both of you for not standing up when the man was trying to do what was right. Amen. Eric can't always be the messenger. Eric rubs people the wrong way sometimes. But the rest of you can stand up. Mrs. Galloway, you are my new hero. You put it to him. And he needs that. He needs that input. He needs to know what we're thinking. Vicky, you disappointed me. A plan without a plan is not a plan. You can't vote on something if you don't have the details, if you don't have the information. If you've got stuff coming next week that's going to be able to make you do this irrelevant vote, wait for it. If he don't want you to wait for it, he's going to pass it anyway. Amen. But it may be a long time before he brings anything else up here for you guys to look at. So you're on a tight rope here. Amen. You're on a tight rope. And you can lean to the left or you can lean to the right. But I'm encouraging you guys to stay on track. Remember, <laughs> conflict is inevitable. It's going to happen. Combat is optional. Okay? And in closing, in all things purely social, we need to be as separate as the fingers, y'all. And one like the hand, in all things beneficial to our mutual progress. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Pastor W.E. Whitaker, Pastor Whitaker.